How's it going guys? It's Dr. Luo with Advanced Spine and Pain Center. Today we're going to be learning about the most common procedure that we do in the pain management space and that is the epidural steroid injection. So what is it actually used for? Number one, the indication for epidural steroid injections are usually for lumbar radiculopathy and also lumbar stenosis if we're just talking about lower back. So what is lumbar radiculopathy? So the most common form of lumbar radiculopathy comes from disc herniation. So disc pushing backwards onto the nerve and causing any type of nerve irritation. And that typically represents as a pain that comes down to the side of the hip and then radiating all the way down to the legs. And we're talking about the lower leg, just uh, not just the hip. So the other form is lumbar stenosis. Now lumbar stenosis is a central stenosis where the nerve in the middle is compressed so that when you're walking, when you're standing for a while, you're just not able to have the pain signal conducting from your brain all the way down to the lower legs. So that would manifest as a, a cramping, a heaviness of the leg after you walk. Now how far you can actually walk may depend on, on your symptom severity. The procedure is a same day procedure where we actually put a little bit of numbing medication and some steroid in the area to, to calm down the inflammation. And this is approved by insurance and typically it takes 5 to 10 minutes to do. So let's go in and take a look at the procedure itself. The procedure is done with you lying on your stomach in such a way that the physician can best visualize the nerve coming out from the bony landmark of the neck, mid back or lower back, depending on the area that we're treating. So this is under x-ray guidance. You will likely be offered a light IV sedation to keep, keep you more relaxed but awake during the procedure. A local anesthetic will be used to numb the area where the injection is to be done. Using the x-ray guidance, a needle is placed in the epidural space via either an interlaminar, which is straight from the back, or transferaminal approach, coming from the side. I'll explain this in the question and answer session later. After a dye is used to verify the epidural space, a combination of local anesthetic and steroid will be injected to decrease an irritation. You may feel some pressure during the injection during the medication, especially if you're feeling the pressure in the same area where you sh feel the shooting pain down to the leg. The procedure takes about 5 to 20 minutes depending on how many levels are done. You will be asked to stay in observation for a short period of time. Now the most common question I get is how long does the epidural steroid injection last? And the answer is it really varies. There are some people who are younger and their disc herniation is not bad and we're taking away some of the chemical inflammation in the area. They may get one or two injection and they last for years. And there are certainly people who have severe compression or they've had it for a long time. It may not last very long. So it really depends. The other common calls I get is that my epidural steroid injection only lasts a day and then I get a phone call on the second day saying that their pain is coming back. This can be explained by there are two medications in the actual syringe that we use. One is bupivacaine and one is a steroid which is dexamethasone. The bupivacaine typically lasts about 8 to 12 hours so that may explain why you only get pain relief for the 12 hours which for most people that's the first day. And then the steroid takes a couple of days to slowly kick in. For some people that may be three days, for some people that may be two weeks. So you may have to be patient if you did get some relief but the pain just came back right away on the second day. Now there are two different approaches that we use. One is called the interlaminal approach, the other one is transferaminal approach. These are different approaches that we use to get to the epidural space. The interlaminar approach is a straight shot in the back. This is the approach typically anesthesiologists use for uh, labor and delivery for epidural. The other way we can do this is the transferaminal approach. So transferaminal approach comes from the side, meaning will come from this side and also coming from this side. Now this approach has the advantage that it may get closer to the disc. 
I don't think at this point one is superior over the other so it really depends on what your pain management doctor wants to do all right thank you guys that's everything I have for you if you have any additional questions go ahead and leave me a question down below I'll try to get to you as best as I can have a good one